Hi, and welcome. Right, uh, I have here a very expensive gas barbecue. Uh, it did have some shells on the side, which I've previously taken off. And what we're going to be doing today is converting this to a pellet grill with odds and sods that you can buy from Amazon. So it's actually going to prove quite an interesting little experiment. Right, so I got this from Facebook Marketplace for £20 um, and its original price was £1,000 or £1,000 something uh, US dollars. <coughs> uh, I've taken out the rusty grills that were inside here and the rusty plate that was here and it has, you can tell it was quality because it had cast iron burners. But of course, I don't want any of that crap. Um, so, what we're going to be doing is we're going to put a hopper on the side, we're going to be putting an auger, we're going to have a controller, which is going to be a timed... timed controller. Yes, super. But we're going to have a PID override. So what we do is we get it all nice and smoky and do some smoking and then we initialize the PID and that will keep it at a steady temperature. And then later on during our cook, we're going to switch it back to timed auger movement. Yes, exciting, isn't it? Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Uh, I'm going to show you the kit in a minute and how you put it all together. Hi, right, I'd just like to go through the bits I've ordered on Amazon. I got these from Amazon.com and they do ship to the United Kingdom. I'll go through the parts that came in the various kits. Uh, the, these four items here, right, uh, they came in a kit as one. We've got the stainless steel burn pot. We've got the drive which will drive the auger. We've got the fan that will force the air into the auger burning pot and we have one igniter. Now the other item is this timed controller for the auger and that came with a thermostat and two meat probes. The other thing was the actual auger rod itself. Now, as I said before, I am going to be putting in a PID system. I chose a thermostat. It's a K-type, but it's got a long probe and it measures at the end. Because I don't want to measure the heat right just where the thermostat goes into the housing or measure it flat against is going to protrude into the system. I got a large PID because then it's easier for old git like me to read. And you'll need one of these jobbies which is basically a relay. And I've got this little switch here which is one way then the other way and basically that will switch between the PID and the timed controller but I will be going through that later in another part. Hi, right, we're going to be fitting this burner pot. Now this is a stainless steel one, it is 89 millimeters diameter here by three and a half inches, right? I'm going to be using this hole cutter which is three and three quarters or 95 millimeters. The reason we want that is we want a little play on this so when we've got this tube in we're putting that in and then we want to be able to push it over and then screw it down so it locates nicely and we can take it out easily. So the first thing we need to do is clean up our metal. Okay, 
now we've cleaned up our metal, we need to find the centre. So we measure it. And it's 4.7 inches. So we go to 2.35. Roughly. So I make a mark. Make a mark. Make a mark this way as well. Now, we make a dot in the middle of if it, they're not joining together those, those dots, so we know exactly where we're going. Now, I'd move it in a little bit further by a quarter of an inch from this end, right, at least. Um, so, if we put our pot on there in the middle, we've got a little bit of gap at one end. Okay, so we've got our dot there and we're going to uh, punch a hole there so we can centre the drill nice and easily but I'm just going to give it a go and hope for the best if it doesn't centre then if it wanders off then I will make sure it's in, fo in forwards is always better than reverse it tends to mark or cut better Okay, now I've got a little indent there, which is great. So the next thing is, I've got this spray container, and in here I've got some engine oil, and also I've got uh, some water, and I've got some washing soda. Now this gives me cutting fluid. Now don't even attempt to do any cutting, right, with one of these round things, right, if you're nu lubricating it, all you'll do is you'll burn up this and it'll be absolutely useless. So, here we go. Okay, we, you have to stop every now and again and just fill that little crate. Okay, so now we've done our light groove, you will put some more of this liquid all in that groove. Keep putting this on. Right, okay, now we have just broken through and what you do is you clear, clear out the gap with your liquid. Right, so basically what you have is a circle which some of it's gone through. Now, this has got teeth on it and if you put weight on the side where the a hole is you'll be hitting against the edge and that will just stop this thing in its tracks so it's important to put weight on the leading edge where the teeth are going to be sliding across it not into the edge if that makes any sense it doesn't to me really okay right we've got to the stage where it's actually come out. Right, so the next thing is I use a die grinder with a wheel on it because you want to clear up all the nasty sharp edges and clean up. How you do it is up to you.
So feel around it, make sure it's nice and smooth with a glove on and you're not going to cut yourself. So when you're not wearing gloves and you're fitting things, you don't come across a nasty sharp edge. So we plonk this in, right? Okay, my metal isn't quite wide enough, but I'll just drill a couple more holes to tap. But you can see it's got a little bit of backwards and forwards movement there, which we can use for the auger pipe. We can put this in and then slide it back onto the auger pipe. 